I think it was 2014 or 15, I was like crazy busy. Like there was a period where I'll go to an international trip, come back only for one or two days, go back to another international trip, come back for about one or two days or a day, go back to another international trip. It was it was madness. It was, it was a period like that, something like that. And I think during that period or maybe before, I remember meeting some brothers in Chicago and there was such a really nice brother that he sat me down in, I think, another brother's house. And he was like, what are you doing? Like, really? <laughs> he ripped into me. Like, what are you doing? You know, all these speeches, this stuff that you're doing. What are you doing? I mean, you know, is this even like working or, or something like that? He basically said to me, who are you developing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he had a really profound effect on me. And I remember coming back and I was sitting with, at the time, the operations manager, Mohammed Arshad, who now runs Muslim CEO. Um, he, be, I signed down, we sat down and, and I started crying. I was like, what, what are we doing? Like, you know, you could be doing a lot of action, but that, but a rocking chair moves a lot, but it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> like a rocking chair is moving a lot, but it's not going anywhere. And I made a decision that if I was going to do trips or stuff like that, it, would, it was always going to be in terms of trying to empower others and create other leaders or educate them in Dawa. And what's very interesting is that helped me develop a lot of course material for like maybe advanced stuff like atheism and along the journey all of that stuff that happened became the basis of my book which is very interesting so you know if you were to link all of these events and th this situation together that brother that spoke to me in chicago could be getting the reward for everything for thousands of people that we've trained for the course material that's been used in i era that's been going to be used in this new institute that we're developing and um, it's it's it was the basis for the book that's been printed thousands of times it's, it's been translated into germany now i think russian kurdish turkish um arabic it's been translated in urdu i believe and he's getting all the rewards for that just because he inspired in me it's about other people it's not about you uh, because you got you just be very honest when it comes to the dawah it's about me isn't it especially remember I came into the DAO at the time YouTube was being developed and Facebook was being developed. It was the worst time, right? And now, God forbid, what's happening? It's even worse, yeah? And these were new platforms. And that, you know, if you don't have the right disposition, that's going to affect you in a really severe way. So you're thinking you're doing something good, but is it the best thing that you can do? And that's the questions that we don't ask ourselves. Ah, it's not, it's not haram. I'm doing something virtuous. I know. But what's the trick of shaitan? Shaitan wants you to, to, to move you away from the greatest deed to a lesser deed. You know, shaitan has tricks, isn't it? Move move you from a greater deed to a lesser deed, from a lesser deed to something that is disliked, something that's disliked to something that's haram, something that's haram to something that is of bid'ah, something that's bid'ah to something that is of shirk, or whatever the case may be. Allah, has, sorry, the, the shaitan has these strategies. So we may think we're doing something really good because it's in line with our own ego-centric, egotistical, you know, uh, approach or uh, psychological state. But is it the best thing to do? So one would have argued, Hamza's working hard, he's traveling the world, he's doing dawah, he's giving lectures. But at the end of the day, was it the best thing to do? And was it the most sincere thing to do? No, it wasn't. What was more sincere is empowering others. Uh, because you can't take the world over yourself. You can't all do it yourself. And you need others. And we need more leaders. We need people to be empowered to articulate Islam and share Islam intelligently and compassionately. So that was a really key wake-up moment, I think, for me. It, you know, it wasn't a button or a switch and overnight everything was fine but but it triggered something my brother planted the seed for sure mm -hmm.